Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, that's for art. I'm going to read a little bit of our book, Poison Power, uh, The Case Against Nuclear Power Plants, written by uh, Dr. John Goffman and Arthur Tamplin, doctors both. And I'm going to get right to it. We are on Chapter 3, I believe it's Chapter 3, and it is called How Radiation Produces Disease and Hereditary Alterations. Chapter 3 it is. In recent years in medicine, our horizon has broadened considerably concerning the implications of genetics and mutation for human disease. In the past, genetic diseases were considered to be a relative rarity among the causes of life, disability and death. Now we realize that this rarity is an illusion, which led to a grave underestimation of the role of genetic mutations in human diseases. Today we recognize that a large proportion of all human afflictions are at least partially determined by hereditary but, and hence related to genetic mutations. Heredity, I said that wrong word wrong. Numerous authorities and authoritative bodies consider that the developing evidence may finally indicate that most, if not all, human disease has a genetic component. Oh dear, he's going to cite the United Nations. The United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation states, uh, the asterisk says, Report of the United Nations Scientific Committee of the Effects of Atomic Radiation, General Assembly, Official Records, 17th Session, Supplement 16, in parentheses, A slash 5216, end parentheses, Chapter 4, Hereditary Effects, paragraph 56, page 19. Quote, It is generally accepted that there is a genetic component in much, if not all, illness. This component is the, excuse me, lost my place. This component is frequently too small to be detected. In other instances, the evidence for its presence is unequivocal. Nevertheless, the role of genetic factors in the health of human population has not in the past been considered seriously and vital in health statistics. As a consequence, data on the prevalence of hereditary diseases and defects are now largely restricted to that collected by geneticists for specific purposes in limited populations from a small number of countries. An assessment of the hereditary defects and diseases with which a population is afflicted does not necessarily provide a measure of the imposed burden of suffering and hardship on the individual, family, or society. Oh, how kind of them. Unquote. Professor Letterberg, Letterberg asterisk, uh, government is most dangerous of genetic engineers. What is that? That's the title of something he wrote. Government is most dangerous of genetic engineers. Joshua Letterberg, The Washington Post, Sunday, July 19, 1970. Professor Letterberg has recently stated that the following, quote, We can calculate that at least 25% of our health care burden is of genetic origin. This figure is a very conservative estimate in view of the genetic component of such griefs such as schizophrenia, diabetes, and arterial sclerosis, mental retardation, early senility, and many congenital malformations. In fact, the genetic factor in disease is bound to increase an even larger population. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to read that again. I skipped ahead. In fact, the genetic factor in disease is bound to increase to an even larger proportion, for as we deal with infectious diseases and other environmental insults, the genetic legacy of the species will compete only with traumatic accidents as major factor in health. Wow. The genetic legacy of the species will compete 
only with traumatic accidents as the major factor in health. Traumatic accidents, like Fukushima, you guys. That's what that fucking means. Professor Lederberg has stated that the problem succinct, has stated the problem succinctly and well. In the early days of medicine, our techniques of sorting out genetically determined diseases were cruder and tended only to find the diseases that had a simple so-called Mendelian form of inheritance. These are diseases which could, which could be referred to as single gene diseases. The inheritance patterns expected were known, and hence the genetic basis for the diseases ascertained relatively easy by studies of the occurrence of the disease in families and their ancestors. Among the classical case of such diseases are the well-known, oh my gosh, phenylconorrhea, I do not know how to spell it, P-H-E-N-Y-L-K-E-T-O-N-U-R-A, phenylketonuria, glacotomosia, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, hemophilia, and others. Wow. However, altogether, such diseases, numerous as they are, only account for less than 1% of deaths. This is very serious, but still a small, but still small, compared to the now greatly expanded list of genetically determined diseases, the now well-known multi-gene diseases. Wow. For many years, medical experts realized that the host of the more common and serious diseases of man had a familial pattern but not one as readily ascertainable as the case for the single gene diseases listed above. Dr. C. O. Carter, in a recent compilation of evidence, uh, it's called The Malfactoral Genetic Disease by C. O. Carter, Hospital Practice, that's the, that's the um, medical journal, it's called Hospital Practice, Volume 5, page 45 to 59, May 1970, Dr. Carter is director of the British Medical Research Council's Clinic Genetic Unit. Okay, Dr. Carter has shown that a whole group of important human diseases are indeed genetically determined, but it appears that these diseases are determined by the interaction of more genes than one, and that this is complicated by further interactions with environmental factors. As a result of such work, we are now forced to consider not only the rarities of hemophilia as genetically determined diseases, but also diabetes mellitus, arteriosclerosis, the major form of hardening of the arteries, schizophrenia, and rheumatoid arthritis, all as being genetically determined diseases. Hence, they are all subject to increase in occurrence as a result of increase in genetic mutation rates by radiation or any other mutagenic influences, like the coal ash. I think coal ash does that. <clears throat> How do such diseases added to the genetic list lead, Dr. lead Professor Letterberg to say a conservative 25% of all diseases is, are genetic, or lead others to say possibly all diseases, aside from trauma, may have a genetic component. Let us focus our attention on the disorder known as arterial sclerosis. This disorder underlies most of the most serious forms of heart diseases in the United States, namely coronary heart disease. It is coronary heart disease that accounts for the greatest majority of heart attacks. The coronary heart disease kills more than twice as many Americans prematurely as all forms of cancer plus leukemia combined. Um, that was 1970. I wonder what the statistics are today, post-Fukushima. We should look into that, hey? Let me put something there. What is more, arterial sclerosis may not affect the arteries of the heart but also those of the brain, many internal organs, and the legs. The total disability and death from arterial sclerosis are not really fully realized at all, 
for as a complicating factor in other diseases, as roles may have been underestimated and underestimated seriously. Oh, its role may have been underestimated and underestimated seriously. The fact that arterial sclerosis and coronary heart disease must now be regarded as genetic in origin really means that over 50% of all disease at least is genetic. The implications of genetic mutations are thereby <clears throat> rendered grossly more serious than <clears throat> excuse me are thereby rendered grossly more serious than realized previously. Only when a single gene disease like hemophilia are considered as the genetic disorders of man. It was stated that before a 10% increase in genetic mutation rate would ultimately lead to 10% more of the biological damage produced per generation by this particular defective gene, gene or chromosome. The cost in healthcare per generation can increase the 10% increase in biological damage. Let us consider arterial sclerosis again. While we know that more arterial sclerosis will result in a higher frequency of heart attacks, we do not know the precise relationship between the degree of arterial sclerosis in the arteries of the heart and the occurrence of rates of, hearts attack, of heart attacks. Indeed, the available evidence on this subject suggests that the risk of a premature heart attack may rise much more steeply than simply in proportion to the degree of arterial sclerosis. It may well be that an increase of 10% in the average decrease, I'm, I'm sorry, it may well be that an increase of 10% in the average degree of coronary artery artery arterial sclerosis may lead to a 50% increase in the frequency of heart attacks. He's saying it may well be, but that may not be the thing. Okay, we simply know that the relationship, we simply know the relationship well enough. Oh, I'm sorry. We simply don't know the relationship well enough. Gosh, good thing it's almost time to stop, eh? But we, I'm going to finish a chapter. Okay, let me read that again. It may well be that an increase of 10% of the average degree of coronary artery arterial sclerosis may lead to a 50% increase in the frequency of heart attacks. We simply don't know this relationship well enough. Similarly, arterial sclerosis of the arteries of the brain underlies a fair proportion of the strokes or cerebrovascular accidents. Again, whether a 10% increase in the average degree of arterial sclerosis of the cerebral arteries will increase strokes by 10%, 20%, or 50% is just not known. Wow. As a result, while we can anticipate that a 10% increase in mutation rate will ultimately increase the biological damage resulting in major diseases by 10%, it is quite possible that the increased disease incidence may exceed this 10% increase in damage, quote, already of grave consequence, unquote, by quite a lot. The consequences of genetic mutation as a result of the new medical concepts of the important role of genetic factors in health and disease are indeed far far more serious than were realized 10 short years ago. Incidentally, many of the standards for so-called allowable doses of radiation to the public for atomic energy programs such as nuclear electricity generation were set before the new implications of human genetic diseases were appreciated. Wow! That fact alone requires a total reevaluation of atomic energy programs, nuclear electricity generation among them. So, th before we knew about the genetic mutation passing to the degree that it did, they started building nuclear power plants. And they've known it how long, and so now they just keep denying it because the rate is so insignificant. 
we've been pushed over the edge. This is really, uh, I hope somebody will take this information to heart and come up with some solutions. We need solutions. So um, I don't know who understands this stuff well enough, but put your courage feet on you guys. Bye. And make sure you go to the NRC website and tell them no. Look for the hormesis role model versus the nonlinear threshold. It's nonlinear threshold versus uh, hormesis model. Say no to hormesis. It's a lie. A little bit of radiation is not good for us, as we have just learned on the 10% factor. So <laughs> put your courage feet on. Take some action. Ciao.